Hi everybody. On request from some people at reddit.com, we at Jungle Ranch have made a basic course in lofting in two parts. This is part one. If you want to read more, there are some links in the video description. This basic course in lofting is divided in some chapters. These will be presented in two videos. This video is part one. One, history of lofting. Two, what is lofting? Three, how is lofting used? Four, making a lofting table. Five, draw the grid lines. Six, marking the table of offsets points and draw the curved lines. Seven, draw the lines with deduction for the planking. Eight, making molds for mounting or wood frame cutting. One, history of lofting. Let me explain the history of lofting. The lofting technique is more than 500 years old. They really don't know how old it is. The name lofting comes from when they built a loft because there was no space for floor drawings. The loft gave them a lot of space to do full-size floor drawings. They called it lofting. Two, what is lofting? Lofting is a modeling technique used to create a 3D shape by defining a series of 2D cross-sectional profiles called lofts, and then generating a smooth surface or solid that transitions between them. Lofting is not used only in boat building, but also in aircraft design, automotive design, and 3D modeling, e.g., in software like SolidWorks, AutoCAD, Fusion 360. In boat building, lofting is the process of drawing the full-size plans of a boat or ship on a flat surface, often a large sheet of plywood or the floor of the workshop. It is used to precisely transfer scaled-down plans into full-size templates for cutting materials. Well, this sounds simple, but in reality, can be really difficult. Furthermore, it is very easy to do errors as there are so many lines. Lofting is the same for all boat building techniques, with some minor difference. There are several types of boat building techniques. However, two types of building are more common. Molds on a keel, backbone, etc., with steam bended frames. With molds on a keel, you loft the wooden molds. These are temporal molds and will be removed in a later stage. The pictures shown here are examples from Bud McIntosh's book, How to Build a Wooden Boat. In this type of building, you have a so-called rabbit line. The rabbit line coordinates can be in the table of offsets or can be found in the construction drawing. The other common type is frames on a ladder, upside down, with station cut to shape with help of a mold based on the lofting. In this building technique, you loft the stations which are mostly not temporarily. 3. How is lofting used? Whatever type of boat design, there are usually three types of major planes. Body view, profile view, and half breadth view, plus a table of offsets. Of course, there are other drawings describing various things. Body plan view. The body plan is usually presented as a separate drawing, but can be in the construction drawing. Example of this is Bud McIntosh, who incorporate the body plan around mid-station in the construction plan. The body plan is longitudinal slices of the boat, at equal distances called stations. The distances between the stations depends on the design and are different for depending on the design. The body plane consists of a baseline and a vertical axis. The baseline is often below all stations but can be located at the so-called design waterline, DWL, where the real waterline is supposed to be in a defined loaded state. A grid system is used by defining horizontal waterlines with a different distance relative to the baseline like 12, 18, 24, 36, 42, 52 inches, and more. The vertical lines seen in the picture are called buttocks lines. In a boat glossary, ship and boat building terms states, used for developing and checking the fairness of the after end lines of a boat, used only for lofting the lines to full size. These lines are simply vertical lines in reference to the grid system vertical line. The distances can be the same as water lines like 12, 24, 36 inches or more. The diagonals are a little more difficult. They are usually not 45 degrees and not always inclined equal. How they are defined depends on the designer. In the picture, you can see that the diagonals have different angles as well. Usually, they are defined on the drawing with notes stating the location or drawn to a measured distance. In the table of offsets, states the distance from the vertical line along the diagonal. Note, all stations forms are outline of the boat. When making station in whatever method, you must deduct for the planking. This create additional lines in the lofting. Profile view. Most plans show the boat facing right, so the profile is what you see from the right side. The profile is generally bounded on top by the shear line, 
at the bow by the curve of the stem, underwater by the keel, and aft by the transom, with buttock lines showing the shape of the hull from the center line outward. Profile view shows vertical slices along longitudinal of the boat. In this you can again see the baseline, however not shown here, due to copyright. Here you can see the longitudinal water lines and the curved buttocks lines. The buttock lines are the slices. Half breadth view or half width. This is a plan with horizontal longitudinal section. The half breadth views like the profile view, but in an opposite plan. In this drawing, you can see the shaped water and diagonals lines and other shapes of the boat. Table of offset. All plans described are based on the table of offsets. In the table of offsets, there are measures for shear, intersection with the deck, water lines, buttock lines, profile point versus station, and much more, depending on design. For boat building frames on keel, there is usually data for the rabbit line. In the picture, the profile is called C slash L of fair body. Also, there is a definition of a chine profile location and intersection with cabin slash deck. Usually, the measures are stated in feet. Inches, 1 slash 8 inch, or decimal of feet. We always translate all into 1 millimeter measure. Note, there can be errors in the table of offsets. To detect and avoid these, you should use Microsoft Excel to plot the shape or station and compare with digitized values. We use Get Data Graph Digitizer but there are many other similar software. With a JPG file of the plan, you can see small details not visible in Adobe PDF. 4. Making a lofting table. Usually, the professionals build a full-size lofting table. Many private builders don't have that space, so they instead build a lofting table big enough for the stations. Let's say 3 by 3 meters, 10 by 10 feet, or suitable for the boat they want to build. Whatever. If you do full-size lofting of the whole boat, or to station and other parts, you must have some sort of wire slash beam or a laser representing the middle of the boat in your build. If you install the stations correctly lined up as they should be, you will get the lines you can see in the profile and half-breadth views. When you are finished with the process of lofting, you store away or destroy the lofting table. We at Jungle Ranch have solved it by raising up the lofting table. When building your lofting table, Try to use as little wood as possible, but strong enough. Our lofting table in the picture is 3 by 2.7 meters, 10 by 8 feet, and made by wood frames of 40 by 75 millimeters, 1.6 by 3 inch, plus surrounding beams. On top of this is 12 millimeters plywood screwed with Spax torque screws. The plywood edges are filled with something called ready mix and sanded. The table is painted with three layers of white paint. Calculated. The total weight of this table is about 70 kilograms. The lifting device is accomplished by 300 kilograms winch and four pulleys. This is the end of part one. In part two, you will see the other chapters. Thank you for watching.